Hey, everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Nick DeVorn from The Local Spicery. The Local Spicery makes some of the most delicious SOS-free sugar, oil, and salt-free spices you've ever tasted, including things like pepperoni spice, gingerbread spice, Tosca del Sol, bada bing, bada boom, and my new favorite, which I just used up today at lunch, sumac. I'm obsessed with this stuff. And now he even has a vanilla powder. But today he's here to do a cooking demonstration and he's going to be making Singapore noodles. Please welcome Nick to the show. It sounds delicious what you're making. You know, it's delicious. It's really easy to make. And like everything that I do, it's, it's, it's got a big, bold flavor and it's very, very satisfying. Well, I can't wait to see how it turns out. What spices are you going to be showing us today? Uh, so the stars of this show, um, like a lot of them, we're going to be using the Bada Bing Bouillon. Uh, the real star, the uh, Singapore noodles, the backbone is always a, a really good high quality curry powder. In this case, I'm going to be using Vadavan. Uh, Vadavan is, a, uh, is from uh, Southern India, from the Pondicherry region, has a distinctive French twist to it. Uh, it is aromatically quite sweet, very bold. Uh, one of my absolute favorite uh, uh, blends in particular for uh, uh, vegetables. And then lastly, uh, something I'm pretty excited about. Uh, we, I uh, developed a, a vegan SOS free uh, fish sauce, which we're, we're spelling with a PH so no one gets confused. Wait, and uh, you, you say, you're kidding. Did you say stock or sauce? Sauce, fish sauce, you know, it's a traditional Asian fish sauce, but we make it using our, our uh, blend called Depth, which is kind of my umami blonde bomb. Uh, but one of the main flavors in the Depth is kombu kelp, which gives it kind of that, that flavor of the sea. Uh, so I'll, I'll give it away in part, the, uh, the fish sauce, which I pre-made for the cooking demonstration. It has some, uh, 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 pineapple juice, uh, the uh, the depth spice, uh, fresh chopped garlic, uh, and uh, uh, lime juice, and it uh, it's a pretty pretty good uh, uh, pretty good imitation. Works really well. Well, that sounds amazing. It was it was one of those things you start cooking and it just came together, and uh, I have a feeling I'm going to be using this in a lot of recipes. Well, fantastic. Diane says, hi, Nick. Hi, Diane. Should we get started? Yeah, get started. I can't wait. Okay. All right. So we're going to talk, what we're going to make is a, a dish called uh, Singapore noodles. Uh, it's also sometimes called uh, uh, street noodles or chat noodles. Uh, it is, uh, it is, it can be found on any street corner uh, in Asia. Uh, usually sold out of a out of a hand cart, um, and uh, as you can imagine, as street food, uh, it can be made very very quickly. Uh, it is very uh, heavily spiced, and so it has a big bold flavor, and a very very satisfying uh, uh, feel to it. Um, uh, in this case, uh, you know, I've made the I've made the recipe completely SOS free. But I've also added some additional uh, uh, vegetables into it. One thing that's not usually done with, uh, with uh, uh, Singapore noodles is I love uh, uh, chopped cabbage uh, in with my noodles. So we're gonna put some cabbage in. We've got some carrots, we've got some, some other things. So it's, it's really, it's a big saute of noodles uh, uh, with the vegetables, with the fish sauce. And then uh, uh, just to put some, uh, some additional interest into it, we're gonna do a very, very quick uh, 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 tofu balsamic uh, that we'll put on top. I think I've, I kind of refer, refer to these, uh, these uh, generically as flavor bombs. These are little flavor bombs. So uh, to get started, the great thing about this dish, uh, I like to, I, I can do all the prep work in advance, have it all set up and put away. The company can come in and in 15 minutes, we're sitting down and eating dinner. Uh, the things that I do in advance, and I'll, I'll walk you through the prep work that I've done so far here. I've chopped all the vegetables, you know, I've got them in my Tupperware and out here on the counter. Uh, the tofu, tofu has to be well pressed because you want to get as much moisture out of it. 
and then it's marinated, and the marinade is made of, uh, of uh, uh, balsamic vinegar, a little bit of, uh, of uh, Dijon mustard. Uh, 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 what else do I put in there? Uh, 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 yeah, we put the, some of the vadovan in here and some in the, in the noodles themselves and, uh, and some chili flakes. It's, re it's really pretty simple. But uh, this is that's going to take 15 minutes, so I'm going to get that going first. First off, uh, the other thing that uh, that I prepped in advance because I've already cooked the noodles. We're going to use rice noodles, and you can use any kind of rice noodle. It depends on what you like or what you have. Uh, in this case, you know I have uh, vermicelli, which would work fine. But uh, uh, you know the uh, I don't know if anybody you guys uh, have these as well. I use them a lot. Uh, it's a uh, it's just a, uh, a ramen cake of brown rice and uh, and millet noodles. Uh, they have they have uh, no added oil. Uh, they're very very good. They cook quickly. The key though is uh, with rice noodles is you cook them and then you have to uh, uh, and then you have to uh, uh, you have to rinse them in cold water. Because the uh, uh, the starches will build up and they'll they'll get sticky and stick together. So I've already cooked my noodles. I've already put them uh, in a strainer and rinsed them with cold water. So they're sitting over in the sink, and we're just going to heat them up quickly in the sauté pan. Um, uh, so let's see. Let me keep going with these. The hey Nick, can you talk about the, the key to the uh, can you hear me? Talk about, yeah. Talk, oh, okay. Talk can, about what? Um, well, Wanda's asking if the fish sauce would be good in pad thai. Yeah, I think so. That's going to be probably the next thing I try. But yeah, you know, pad thai has been a heartbreaker for me because it's one of my really favorite dishes. And SOS3, I just haven't been able to, 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 to match the flavor of fish sauce. So I absolutely intend to do that very soon. Talk a little bit about the bada bing, because I don't think people realize that they can be making their own broth and saving a lot of money on the boxes. Yeah, a lot of money and a lot of time. Bada bing, like a, like a lot of things we do, it's really simple. Uh, uh, all that this is, is it's, uh, it's, it's dried vegetables that we mill, and then we blend it together to a, a, an umami-rich uh, uh, vegan broth powder. Uh, one tablespoon of the uh, of the bada bing powder with a cup of hot water, and you've instantly got a broth that is suitable for anything that you're cooking. Uh, I, I use it sometimes just to make a make a bowl of ramen, but most commonly uh, when I'm you know when I'm sautéing without uh, without oil and the, the the pot starts to get glazed over, uh, it's the perfect deglazer. You know the water is nice, but with the bada bing, it adds uh, adds a lot of richness to it. Let me just see what's going on here. Yeah, we're heating up. Okay, so the, uh, the tofu is just going to go in the air fryer. I want this to cook a total of 15 minutes, but about halfway through, I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to flip it over. So I've just got it set for 15 minutes at 400, which should be plenty. Um, the, uh, uh, so with that going, the, uh, the other thing that I did in advance, so I, I told you I did the fish sauce. I did the marinade, and now let's get started on the uh, on the saute. Nick, what's above your pantry? Is that a moose or a cow? <laughs> That's a cow. My uh, my parents were uh, were huge collectors of ceramic art, and and that's one of the pieces that they left me. It was uh, it was a piece that my father commissioned for my mother uh, for her birthday one year, and yeah, it's a it's a it's a cow on the wall, and I think everybody should have a cow on their wall. That's cute. Let's see. Hey, All how right. Come, Nick, how come, I'm just curious, um, how come, you know, because I've got into sumac lately and I've been getting it from you and some other people were ordering it on Amazon and then they got it and it had salt in it. The whole purpose yeah. of sumac is so that you don't use salt. Why are some companies putting salt in their sumac? So it's, it's pretty traditional. I think the vast majority of the sumac that uh, is out in the marketplace, I would say well over 90% of it has been treated with, uh, with salt and with vegetable oil, you know, in the Middle East, they'll, uh, they'll harvest it and they'll use that in the drying. 
uh, you know, we uh, we're very careful with our uh, uh, with our sourcing, and what we get is has has no added salt, no added oil. It's just uh, uh, just solar dried uh, uh, sumac berry ground into a powder. It's hard to find that way, but it's a good question because you do have to be careful. Um, a lot of people uh, aren't even aware that uh, the sumac that they're selling has salt. And the regulations written by uh, US FDA are a little bit vague about what you have to or not disclose. Uh, specifically, spices that you can just use the word spices and put anything that you want in the dish. So you have to be careful. You have to know where you're getting it from. But ours is uh, uh, not only salt-free and oil-free, but also uh, grown 100% certified organic. So for the, uh, the vegetable saute, I'm, I'm heating this up. I like a nice hot pan. Um, uh, you can see, oh, I got another, hang on, another. Uh... Can't buy my onions. Well, that's not good. <laughs> oh, we have plenty. I'll just, I can just slice them up quickly if I have to. I hope not, though. I thought I had them done in advance. Where did I put them in? One of them. Should have had them all together. Okay, we're going we're gonna to quickly slice some onions here. Sorry about that. Maybe I got lazy in my prep work. Um, so yeah, with uh, with sumac and you know a lot of uh, a lot of things that come out of the uh, the middle Middle East and Mediterranean region, uh, uh, they do uh, uh, traditionally uh, treat it with a little. And it's it's really a very small amount. But you know once we uh, once once they're adding salt and oil, we have to cut it out of our uh, cut it out of our uh, out of our inventory. So we had the same. Same problem with uh, uh, Aleppo chilies and Mirage chilies are wonderful, wonderful chilies that come out of uh, uh, Syria and Turkey. But uh, first, the first problem we had was uh, a lot of them were coming in with oil and with, with salt. And then after the uh, civil war in Syria, couldn't get anything out of there that hadn't been uh, uh, sterilized with ethylene monoxide. So we had to take it completely out. One of my favorite chilies, really hated to lose that. Okay, so this is just about a half of an onion. I sliced it thinly. I'm gonna cut those slices in half and we'll throw it in the pan. And that's an onion. That's, uh, uh, this is one large carrot that I've cut into, you know, just like two inch long matchsticks. And then uh, uh, bell pepper at about the same same size. You want your pieces really thin so that they cook quickly, uh, because this is you know they're going to get like four or five minutes max here, and uh, and they have to be have to be uh, cooked all the way through. Let's see. How we're doing. Okay, that's ten minutes. I got about another two minutes before I have to flip the uh, uh, tofu. So yeah, good question on the on the uh, sumac, and I agree with you. It is it, sumac is almost the perfect uh, salt substitute. You and I have talked a lot about salt substitution, what really can substitute for salt. The great thing about sumac is, you know, it's it's uh, it's sour, but it's also got the berry tones. And in this case, I'm not just talking about a sickly sweet kind of a berry tone. We're talking about a berry tone that adds, you know, richness and depth, and that. Uh, uh, you know, to, 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 to be a true salt substitute, you have to not only approximate the salty flavor, but somehow you have to restore the umamis that, uh, that salt creates. Because when you cook with salt, it breaks down the fats and, and, uh, and releases umami uh, uh, aromatically. Do people ever get whole, whole sumac berries or they don't come that way? They can, They're, it's hard, really hard to find. Uh, uh, we got it a lot for a while and, uh, and tried milling it ourselves. Uh, it was one of those products that was just too wet for us to do in a, in a hammer mill and nothing else would really do it satisfactorily. 
So there are there are recipes that call for it. It is possible to get, but uh, uh, we don't carry it like that anymore. That we just didn't have the demand and we couldn't mill it ourselves. So what we're going to be doing, I'm just going to do this fifty saute. Uh, as soon as uh, as soon as the onions and they're already getting there pretty quickly. As soon as the onions start turning translucent and begin to, uh, to caramelize, uh, I'm going to have to use some hot water because I have to make my uh, my bada bing. Um, I'm going to use just tap water. It's so fast, it's unbelievable. I'm just going to put a uh, tablespoon of the bada bing powder in here. So this is 150 degree tap water. And that's about all you have to do. It's ready. So you know, when it starts to caramelize, the other thing that it does for the pan, as you all know, is to, starts to glaze up the bottom of the pan. So we're gonna use the, uh, the water to deglaze, but when we deglaze, you know, when the, uh, the, the bouillon pulls the, the glazed vegetables off the bottom of the pan, it's just, I, 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 love, I love the aroma that comes off of it. Hey, I think we I think we got what they call a troll. We got some guy named Thomas Allen watching. <laughs> oh, I'm sunk. Thomas, I hope you're doing well. Yeah. Um, it, Lisa, that's not a dead animal carcass. It's ceramic. It should, it's <laughs> oh, that's funny. I don't think a cow would be that small. Um, Stephanie says, what type of noodle is Nick using for the dish? I'll tell you, this, uh, it's, uh, this is what I use. I don't know if you have this at your Costco. We just get this at Costco. It's a, uh, it's brown rice and millet ramen. It comes in these, uh, these little cakes uh, for this, for this uh, dish. I'm, I'm using three cakes, but you could make this with, like I said this earlier, you could easily make this dish with uh, with vermicelli or any kind of a rice noodle. I'd keep it thin though. So I'd say stay with, you know, I, I would personally stick with the ramen or with the vermicelli. Okay. I don't think I'm gonna use, like I, uh, I made up a, a cup of the, uh, of the broth. I don't think I'm gonna use anywhere near that much, but I'm gonna let it, uh, gonna let it simmer away here just to let it reduce a little bit. And actually, I think right now I'm gonna go ahead and add, uh, this, is, uh, this is some fresh ginger. Um, I think, you know, every recipe I've ever done using fresh ginger, they always, they always say use a, uh, use a piece of ginger the size of the thumb, which is about what I do. Just a piece of fresh ginger that size. Uh, uh, I peel it and then uh, and then I uh, I grate it very finely. You can put some fresh ginger in. You can use dry ginger. Um, uh, uh, the dry ginger, no matter what, it's never going to be as sweet as the fresh ginger, which is what I'm going for here. What if you have really big thumbs? <laughs> so when we put our uh, when we put the safety labels on our jars, Evelyn uses she puts her thumb up against it to get the right the right. Uh, with and we do have a problem because there is a distinct difference between the thickness of my fat thumbs and her lovely dainty thumbs. Okay, we're getting close. All right, we're gonna put the uh, the vadovan in. Um, I'm putting in two tablespoons. So vadovan comes from the Pondicherry region. Pondicherry uh, historically was a uh, French colony, which is where the uh, uh, which is where the French influence comes into the uh, into the uh, the, the food. Vaudavon is always blended with uh, with uh, shallots and onions. Um, and in fact, as a flavor, oh man, the aromatics coming off of this are just unbelievable. Okay, so last vegetable that I'm going to add to this is going to be my uh, my half of a cap. This is a half of a small cabbage. Um, uh, there's a guy at the farmer's market I used to buy all my cabbages from, and, uh, and he always gave me the thumbs up when he saw me buying the small cabbages. I bought them because it's just two of us here, but uh, he told me in no uncertain terms that uh, uh, small cabbages are much sweeter than large cabbages. 
This is a uh, just a half of a small cabbage. Slice it as thinly as, as I can. Um, uh, you know, I wouldn't wouldn't uh, hold back on using a mandoline if uh, if you have one and you're uh, you're not scared of cutting your thumbs off. Um, I, I have one. I use it from time to time. In this case, I just use my uh, I just use my uh, uh, my knife, my, my chef's knife. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh, Blah, 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 I'm gonna need this. I'm going to it's pull the tofu. It's just a little bit overcooked, but it's all right. And then just quickly turn it over so we can get the back side. Yeah, it's stuck a little bit. So I've got this. You know, another another thing that would be good to use for tofu instead of the uh, balsamic tofu. That's probably why Thomas came on because he heard the word balsamic. Uh, the uh, it would be a uh, uh, you know a tofu with a, a sauté peanut sauce would be quite nice for this. Okay, okay, let's put this back in here and I'm gonna turn this off because it's plenty cooked. I just want to get the top a little bit dry. Okay, this is reducing really nicely. And we're almost done. We're in the, we are in. All right, so I'm gonna add the fish sauce now. This is the only only sauce that I'm putting in. Uh, as I said, this is, uh, uh, you, you can get the, uh, you can get the full uh, list of ingredients and recipe uh, on our website at localspicery.com slash blog, or just go to our homepage and scroll down to the bottom and click into the, 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 uh, the blog point. So this is probably about a half a cup of the, uh, of the fish sauce. You'll notice we get asked all the time, what do I do with your jars when I'm done with them? This is what I do with them. <laughs> it's, it's the perfect size for this sort of a thing. All right, oh. AJ, we gotta find a way that we can transmit on these things the, the aromas, because I just, the aromas just knock me out. And then last, I'm gonna throw, there's my uh, my rice noodles going in. These. At this point, the name of the game is really just to get it all heated up. We're just gonna stir it around so that it's well blended. And that the vegetables are stirred in with the noodles. And that is really, there is the basic of your chop noodles, your Singapore noodles, your street noodles. Now, what I, one of the great things about this dish, and this is one of the reasons why I wanted to share it with you. People ask all the time for, uh, you know, how do, I, how do I cook with your spices? And this is a great dish. I use Vodavon, but there's no reason you couldn't use any other uh, uh, curry, and it takes you in a totally different direction. You know, you could, uh, you could make the sole, the whole, the same thing using Raz El Hanout, which is a, uh, a Moroccan curry, and you get a more distinctively Moroccan flavor to it. Uh, you could use Spokop curry, which is kind of a Malaysian uh, uh, South African flavor. It's a very, very different flavor. It makes it a different dish. Um, uh, Madras, which is another Southern Indian curry, but it's not, not as sweet as the Vadavan. It's more of a, of a, uh, uh, a savory kind of surrey. Uh, another one, one of my favorites, the Xinjiang, uh, which is our Cantonese blend, gives you more of a Chinese flavor. So this is a simple, basic dish that uh, you could pull it in any direction that you want to pull it and, uh, and, and be completely culturally accurate. Okay. I'm just going to put this in a bowl. Put a little bit of tofu on top. And these, this is gonna be good. The tofu is really nice and crunchy. Um, if you don't want it crunchy, you don't have to do it in an air fryer. You can take it with the marinade and, uh, and just uh, 
uh, saute it on in the oven, or you could put it uh, uh, on a sheet of, uh, of uh, I'm putting that in the wrong place. <laughs> I'm putting it in the, here we go, we'll put it in the serving dish. Uh, you could put it on a, on a sheet of parchment paper and put it in a, a standard oven and it wouldn't get quite so crunchy, but uh, you probably have more of the, uh, the balsamic uh, sauces on the outside, which is kind of nice as well. All right. And then to garnish, um, I'm gonna put a couple of things in this. I'm just gonna quickly slice up some uh, some scallions, just just for the look mostly. And I'm gonna put some uh, some sesame seeds on. And the recipe we wrote it up this using uh, uh, toasted sesame, which is a nice flavor, and they tend to be a little bit softer on the, on the uh, on the teeth. In this case, because uh, I was going through my spice cabinet and I happened to have right next to my uh, toasted sesame, some black sesame as well. We, uh, we, we put together a quick tuxedo sesame blend, which is kind of half and half, uh, white and black sesame. It, uh, it doesn't do that much to the flavor, but it looks lovely on the top. Gives it more of a distinctive Asian look and feel. And then just to encourage people as they're eating to, uh, to uh, maybe squeeze a little bit of extra lime juice on the top to make it a little, a little saucier. We'll cut up and put some lime juice in there. Nick, somebody must have tuned in late because they're saying fish sauce isn't vegan. You made your own. <laughs> yeah, this is a totally vegan, totally SOS free fish sauce. And let me see if I can... I think I'm going to just pick up the camera so you can see this. Can you see that? There we go. Yeah. It's lovely. It's delicious. And it took me about 15 minutes to pull the whole thing together. It, uh, it comes together really quickly. I would serve this at any dinner party. And, uh, and I would serve it to my family for dinner. It's a, it's a nice. And, and for people who are just starting out with, uh, in, uh, with SOS free cooking, um, it's got a very, very strong, bold flavor that uh, you won't miss the salt at all over this. Now, the fish sauce, are you going to sell that as a powder that we reconstitute or like as an actual sauce in a bottle? No, we're not. We're just, you, you can buy the, uh, the depth, which is, which is the main thing to it. And, uh, and, and the recipe for the fish sauce is a, is a subset of this recipe, so you can get it. Uh, wow. You'll find the, the depth is a great product to... Uh, to, to bring a really, really rich umami favor, uh, particularly if you're going for Asian, because the kombu kelp is one of, like I said, one of the uh, one of the main flavors to that to that blend. So I saw a post on Instagram that you have vanilla powder now. Tell us about it. So this is like uh, saying hello to an old friend. Uh, you know, we used to uh, we used to, uh, to carry vanilla a lot. We used to have a lot of uh, a lot of blends that we made with vanilla. Uh, some of the some of uh, of our blends we had to reconstitute the recipe to cut the vanilla out when vanilla got too expensive. Um, some of them we uh, we cut out altogether. But uh, for us, vanilla always included a particular company uh, that we're we're very close to and uh, we're quite enamored with. The company is called Mafaza, and this will be the only product that we sell. That, uh, that has the name of another company on it. It says Lafaza on the jar. Uh, this is a, the company, it's, uh, it's two brothers. Uh, the older brother went to, uh, uh, um, uh, went to Madagascar with the Peace Corps where he fell in love with the, with the culture and the people and the land and he just didn't want to come back. Uh, and the two brothers decided to form a vanilla company uh, where they worked very, very closely with the community in, in Madagascar uh, long before anybody was talking about uh, uh, fair trade. These guys were funneling their profits back into the community. They're building libraries. They're building uh, uh, schools. Uh, they're working with the farmers to help them, uh, you know, establish you know, better, better practices for, uh, for sanitary purposes. Uh, they're just wonderful people. They're doing the right thing. And because they're so close to the farmers, they get the absolute highest quality uh, uh, vanilla anywhere. So we're really proud to be carrying La Faza vanilla. 
We have it in these uh, one ounce jars. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the price point is. We, we, we just put it up. We've been kind of going back and forth, but it's probably going to be around $20 for a, a one ounce jar. Uh, Madagascan vanilla is, you know, 90% of the vanilla in the world comes out of Madagascar now. And uh, uh, it has a, a very, very strong, very rich, powerful flavor. It's, uh, it's considered, you know, if not the best, one of the best uh, vanillas in the world. In my mind, I would rate the Madagascan and, uh, and uh, Mexican Veracruz vanilla as, uh, as top of the tops. Wow, thanks. Maybe you'll come next time you come back, you'll do a recipe using the vanilla. Absolutely. And actually, uh, probably by next week, we already have it up on the website and we've already sold a bunch of jars of it. But uh, one of our more popular blends with vanilla is called Dark. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's a rich, sweet, aromatic, uh, spicy blend. It's, it's got a ton of vanilla. It's like 60% vanilla, but uh, the rest of it is... Uh, 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 sweet chilies, uh, kind of like a, uh, a, uh, a Central American cocoa, uh, but also some highly aromatic, some cardamom, some uh, uh, sour anise, some cinnamons. Uh, and it's a wonderful, wonderful flavor, and we're happy to have it back. So starting next week, we'll be shipping uh, dark out again, and uh, just try that. That'll be great in your smoothies. It's great sprinkled on fresh fruit. Actually, it was one, it was a flavor that I originally created specifically to go with uh, chocolate. Uh, it, it is wonderful, uh, blended with chocolate or sprinkled on top of something with chocolate. Wow, well, fantastic. Well, thanks so much. We look forward to seeing what you uh, come up with next. Yeah, it's great to see you again, AJ. Thanks for having me on again. It's been a lot Anytime. of fun. Are more people ordering sumac now? I think. <laughs> yeah, you you uh, you about blew the uh, blew the switch on sumac. We were selling. It's really good, and you, and you know, I was told about it like like almost three years ago by Dr. Nikki Davis, who used it on the show and said it was a great salt substitute. I don't know what took me so long. It's really wonderful. Yeah, yeah, I I agree. That's a great. You can great put it place. on everything: soup, salads, vegetables. It, it's just it's I don't know. I love it. Well, thanks so much, Nick. Look forward to see what you come up with next month. Thanks. Okay. All right. Thanks. And thanks everyone for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back in 30 minutes. We have a third show today with a wonderful recipe from Danielle Arsenault. She's going to be making raw vegan mouthwatering tacos. She's going to make her own tortillas and her own ranch dressing. So I hope to see everybody back here in 30 minutes. Take care, Nick. Love to Evelyn. Bye-bye.